A very good evening to all, uh, dear brethren. <clears throat> so last week uh, we studied about the uh, uh, second coming of our Lord Jesus, uh, and uh, we studied that uh, how Antichrist should come before uh, the second coming of our Lord Jesus, and we have seen from the scriptures that Antichrist is not an individual man. Neither is the triple six uh, any uh, literal uh, number. It is the uh, name of the beast. And Antichrist was there the, since the days of the apostles. So the uh, triple six uh, put on the head and hand uh, symbolizes the accepting of that false doctrine and supporting of the evil systems. We also saw that uh, how uh, this uh, triple six is uh, mentioned in the Roman numericals. So. Uh, now, after the Antichrist uh, has uh, come, we are clearly come to know. Now, the uh, next thing is that, uh, how will the Lord uh, return? So, how, when and why? So, generally, people tell that, uh, you see, uh, Jesus is going to come very soon. You tell me, why everybody tells that Jesus is going to come very soon? When you ask the date, what is the usual reply they give? They give that uh, nobody knows there, you see. Uh, day or uh, the time, uh, not even the Son of Man, except the Heavenly Father. Okay, so nobody knows the uh, when Jesus is going to return. Correct, no? So last time we saw this one. Now you tell me, why did uh, Jesus say this one? If Jesus uh, did not know about second coming, why did uh, uh, he say these words? Uh, does it mean that Jesus doesn't know about his second coming at all? What does it mean? Gopal brother, home brother, tell me. Because Jesus was not died at that time and he was not resurrected in heavenly, uh, like uh, in a spiritual body. That's Good. why he said. Okay. Home brother, how about you? Home brother. Home brother, you're there online. Home brother. Okay. So, uh, tell me, brother. Where? Unmute and speak. No, I didn't uh, understand your question. Sorry. The question is that, uh, why did Jesus say that no man knows when the sun will return at the second coming? Why did Jesus say that one? Brother, you're there? Home, brother. Home, brother. If you can respond properly or quickly, I can continue the class. You tell me at least if you know or not. It will be very convenient for me to continue the classes. See, when we ask question, we need to know how much you understood. So we can give more clarity on the picture. So, okay, you intend to be silent. Okay, we leave it as a matter later only. Uh, actually, if you see what uh, Gopal brother has said is correct, Jesus had not proven his faithfulness to Lord uh, until his death. So only after uh, he was uh, resurrected that uh, Heavenly things were revealed to him, and especially the second coming matters also was revealed to him. Hence, uh, Apostle Paul clearly tells uh, in First Thessalonians 5 1 that uh, there is not required uh, for uh, uh, <clears throat> to write about the second coming of uh, Lord Jesus Christ uh, because uh, you see, now already you know about it very clearly. So, we studied about um, you see, the uh, five parts uh, of the Lord's second coming why Jesus is going to come. The general expectations and how Jesus is going to come, how to identify the date of his second coming. So we saw the first part, why Jesus is going to come, their various purpose, he's going to rule for a thousand years, he's going to bruise the Satan side, he's going to come for the judgment, he's going to collect the church, he's going to bind Satan for a period of a thousand years and he's going to resurrect everybody and he's going to bring salvation to everybody. So we saw this one in the first chapter, first part and in the second part, we saw the general expectations of our Lord uh, uh, second uh, coming. Everybody thinks that the uh, Lord will return like that only from heaven. You see, and he blow the trumpets and literally come down from heaven. The rapture will take place. Uh, 
But uh, the verse also says that he will come like a thief. Now, does a thief come uh, with blowing a trumpet? Tell me. Does a thief come with blowing a trumpet? No. Gopal brother. No. No. So, how do we understand this verse? In, uh, you see, Acts 1.11 and Revelation 1.7, it says that every eye shall, uh, you see, uh, behold him. Every eye shall see him. But Jesus... In John 14, 19, he says, the word shall see me no more. I mean, how can we harmonize these words? Huh? One verse says, nobody can say Jesus. Other verse says, you see, huh? everybody will see Jesus. So how do we understand? So for this reason, uh, we began to study how Jesus came, how he died, and how he was resurrected, and how we will uh, come again. Okay? Now, can anybody tell me how Jesus came to this earth? Before coming uh, uh, to this earth, how was Jesus with Heavenly Father? Home brother, can you tell me? Home brother? Hmm. Uh, he was in divine nature. Before coming, before coming on the first advent, that means when he was created, he was with the Father. Before being birthed in the earth, how was Jesus? He was with the father. Okay. In what nature? He was called as what? What was the name that was given to Jesus? It, is, it was, um, uh, his name was like Ford, or Logos. Very good. Very good. So all these six titles were belonging to Jesus. So he was uh, having uh, the spirit uh, nature. So Jesus, when he was born in the mother's Mary's womb, you see, he was born in the flesh. And that body is sacrificed for the redemption of Adam and is raised. Okay? Jesus said, no, the bread that I give for the world is my flesh. Once Jesus sacrificed his body on the uh, altar, okay, can he come back in the same body if you see? No. That body was given as a sacrifice. Therefore, how was Jesus resurrected? Was Jesus resurrected in the same body? Uh, no. Yes. No. Gopal brother, was Jesus resurrected in the same body? No, brother. Oh, he was resurrected in the spiritual body. Apostle Paul saw him and he was blinded. He is now living in an immortal nature, a light which no man can approach and no man can see into. So, therefore, Apostle Paul says in 2 Corinthians 5.16 that uh, though we have known uh, uh, Christ in the flesh, henceforth from future, we won't uh, uh, know anybody in the flesh because Jesus is a spirit uh, being. Therefore, Jesus said, uh, and the world can't see this uh, spirit being uh, so easily. Then, how did uh, uh, Jesus appear to Thomas? Can anybody tell me? How did Jesus appear to Thomas? He told, no, put thy, you see, a finger in my wound, uh, touch it and see. How did uh, Jesus appear to Thomas? Can anybody tell me? How did Jesus appear to Thomas? Oh, good, don't brother, tell me. Um, because of divine nature, he can, uh, he can be uh, like, be, uh, like a uh, flesh, his body also, the flesh. Very good. So, being in uh, angelic nature, the spirit nature, he had the power to assume different bodies. Sir. Okay, so uh, is there any example of angels assuming the bodies of human being? Is there any examples for that? Uh, excuse me, brother Raju, sorry to interrupt. Uh, sorry to interrupt, brother Ho is telling a serious blunder. They are telling that uh, in Tom, uh, in the case of Thomas, Jesus was in divine nature and that he could uh, appear in bodies. That should not be. Jesus was in angelic nature and he could materialize in the human forms. Divine nature will not materialize. We need to be clear on that. Brother Rome is not clear yet. Thank you. Divine nature will remain divine, invisible. Thank you. So, uh, Jesus was in the angelic nature for, uh, you see, uh, 50, 40 days. 
So after 40 days, uh, he went to, uh, you see, uh, Heavenly Father, and uh, it is then that uh, he received the divine nature. Okay. In this uh, uh, 40 days, uh, uh, you see, uh, he actually uh, offered uh, uh, himself uh, uh, and to God, and that is the time that God gave him divine nature. And he, in this 40 days itself, he appeared 11 times. But uh, is there any example that uh, uh, angels have assumed uh, human, uh, uh, you see, appearance or human uh, fleshly body? Any examples in the Bible, brother? Gopal, brother, any examples in the Bible? Angels yes. have appeared in the flesh. Yes, brother. Uh, appeared to Daniel and uh, appeared to uh, Jacob, fight with Jacob. Very good. And appear, appear to uh, uh, the father of John the Baptist. Good, very good. Appear to the father of John the Baptist. Excellent. So these are all examples uh, where we can clearly see that the angels can appear in the flesh. Okay. And similarly, you see, uh, it is in uh, this uh, uh, this one only that uh, Jesus was there in the forty days in angelic nature. So. So in the angelic nature only, he assumed different bodies. Okay. Now Jesus appeared to Mary. Home brother, tell me. Now in which form did he appear to Mary? Did he appear to Mary as Jesus Christ? Um, no. Very good. Then how did he appear? How was he to look at? He as as a as a uh, as a okay as a uh, angel uh, huh? as an angel uh. he appeared in the flesh no so what form did he assume in a in a human form which form did he assume he was looking like what Gopal brother he was looking like what he was looking like a gardener ah very good as a gardener. It assumed, uh, you see, uh, human flesh as a gardener. Mary could not recognize. Them. She recognized only by the sound. Very good. Okay. Now, next, uh, uh, let me see who is going to tell. Uh, Jesus appeared to two people walking to Emmaus. Now, how did Jesus appear to two people to Emmaus? In what form? Home brother, tell me. As an old man. Very good, brother. As an old man. Very good. So, uh, it was uh, the way Jesus prayed and break the bread that uh, they could identify that uh, this is Jesus. Good. Now, uh, Gopal Buddha, tell me, how did Jesus appear to the disciples while on the seashore? Did he appear like Jesus? No. No. Isn't it? He did not appear like Jesus at all. It was in total different form. But... Uh, None of the disciples dared to ask him that he was Jesus because he knew that it was Jesus who would assume different. But this clearly proves that Jesus was in a spiritual nature. You see, that means he had uh, before receiving the divine nature, okay, yeah, he was there on the earth atmosphere for 40 days in which he appeared 11 types, 11 forms. You see, and uh, in the case of Thomas, to strengthen his faith, Jesus actually appeared in the same type of flesh, not the same flesh. Understood? Uh, the difference. The same type of flesh and the same flesh. Okay. Like, for example, you see, I have a mobile here. Okay. If this mobile is broken, you see, I can get the same type of mobile. It won't be the same mobile, but it will be the same type of mobile with all the features in it. So it's the same way. Jesus did not come in the same body. Which are sacrificed by Adam. It was in the same type of body, dear brain. And he assumed it for only for a few moments later on, which uh, he assumed the angel nature. If uh, everybody are resurrected in the same flesh and go to heaven, you, you see, it will be a very pathetic condition. And how the scriptures support this one because Bible clearly says that flesh and blood cannot enter into the, the heaven. Very good, very good, excellent. So, the flesh and bread, you have to enter the kingdom of heaven. Good, brother, good. Okay, then uh, what happened to the body of Jesus? Can anybody tell me? What happened to the body of Jesus? Where is it?
for you. Nobody knows that. What happened to the body of Jesus? It is actually a mystery. Ombra, tell me. In resurrection, he like changed his um, nature. Uh, body? What happened to the body? This is a mystery. Like the body of Moses is unknown. So it will be revealed in, in due time. Very good. So, as the body of Moses was buried by an angel, which no man can knew, why? Because if God would have allowed the human beings to bury his body, they would have built a, a, a mosque upon the body of Moses then itself. And they would have worshipped. God did not want people to go for ID worship. That is the reason he removed the, the body of Moses. So, similarly, Greater than Moses. Who is the greatest prophet than Moses? Jesus Christ. His body was not kept there so that the people might not go for idol worship. Imagine if the body was there and the and Jesus was resurrected, what would the disciples first think? First think that how oh, Jesus is resurrected. Body is here. He is resurrected. That means the resurrected being is a fake. They will think, no. Correct, no? See, see that this point, because generally the thought of resurrection is that if the body is there, he come back in the same body. Lazarus, what happened? He was in a grave. Jesus called. He came up with the same body. Isn't it? If Jesus has resurrected and the body is there, will they believe if Jesus assumes and comes in the form of a gardener and tells Mary, I am here? Will they believe? Will Thomas believe? Put me your finger in my wound. Will they believe? No. That is the reason he, the body was never allowed to remain there. So where, what happened, we don't know as per the scriptures. But in the kingdom of, uh, you say, our Lord Jesus Christ, these things will be revealed. What happened to the body of uh, Jesus Christ? Actually, you see, the body of Jesus Christ was never corrupted. Okay, This uh, Israel people had a thought uh, that the body has to be preserved for the uh, Resurrection uh, concept, but uh, you see, the other body is uh, not uh, required. Uh, you see, to be resurrected. In all these incidents, uh, what we want to tell you is that uh, the other Jesus clearly proved that he was in a spirit form. He was in a angelic form that he could come and go, even if the door was locked. Hence, we read the incidents uh, that Jesus uh, came into the a place where disciples were there. When the door was totally locked, suddenly he came in the midst of them and said, Peace be unto you. Because why? They were frightened. They all thought that, oh, suddenly a ghost had come. Jesus told, no, no, don't worry. It is me. Peace be unto you. Remain calm. It is me. So, who was the last person to see Jesus Christ? Can anybody tell me who is the last person to see Jesus Christ? Apostle Paul. Very good, brother. Apostle Paul. Then after that one, can anybody see Jesus in the flesh? No. Today, so many people claim, no, oh, I was praying, Jesus came and spoke to me in my ear. He said, my child, I have chosen you. Go preach the gospel. What does the Bible say? Last of all, you have seen of Apostle Paul. Like one born out of a due time. Bible says he is the last. Uh, when somebody claims that, oh, I have also seen Jesus. What truth is it? What spirit guidance is it? You tell me, dear brother. So we should be very careful when studying the Bible. The Bible clearly says that uh, you see, Christ is in the divine nature, and nobody can see him. And if anybody sees him, their eyes will be blinded, as uh, Apostle Paul lost his eyesight. Now you tell me. Jesus' second coming is for what purpose? Is for opening the eyes or blinding everybody's eyes? Tell me, if Jesus is going to come, second coming, will he come and open everybody's eyes or will he come and blind everybody's eyes? I think open the eyes. Open the eyes. Then if he comes in the same divine nature, Full of brightness as Apostle Paul saw, what will happen? Everybody's eyes will be blinded. Therefore, now we should study the third part. What is the third part? How does Jesus come? 
Okay. The third part is how Jesus is going to return at his second advent. Now we have saw, okay, what did we saw? We saw how Jesus is in, huh? in what nature is in? Is in a spiritual, heavenly nature. Now in the third part, we need to see how Jesus is going to come to your Okay? Now what does the Bible say? Let us read a few verses. Revelation 1, 7, brother. Revelation 1, 7, brother. Huh? Revelation 1 7. Hmm. Behold, he cometh with clouds, and every eye shall see him. Oh, and... every eye shall see him. That means what? It come like clouds means what? Like this only. Like angels. Jesus will come in the clouds. So clouds will be there. Upon the clouds, who will be sitting? It's him, sir. Oh, Jesus will be sitting. Huh? He'll come with clouds. Every eye shall see him. Aha. Uh -huh. Okay, every eye shall see him. Okay. Now, has anybody seen angels? Has anybody seen angels in the Bible? Yes. So many people have seen angels in the Bible. Like, for example, there were two angels at the tomb of Jesus. Correct or? Correct or not? Yes. 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 Now, how were the two angels? They were so bright, shining, bright, white raiment. Isn't it? They were so bright and shining white. Okay? Uh, read. Uh, uh, Matthew 28. 2 and 3. Matthew 28, 2 and 3. And behold, there was a great earthquake for the angel of the Lord descended from heaven and came and rolled back the stone from the door and sat upon it. His countenance was like lightning and his raiment white as the snow. So what how was it? Bright shining riches. Countenance was bright. Huh? Shining brightly. Huh? Correct, no? This is the brightness of angel. Huh? Uh, any other incident if you see? Yes. Apostle Peter when he was in prison. Angel came. How was the angel? Acts 12 chapter. Acts 12 chapter. 7th verse. Acts 12, 7. Hmm. And behold, the angel of the Lord came upon him, and a light shined in in the prison, and he sm smote Peter on the side. And See? what happened? It seems the angel came so shine brightly. It seems imagine if a sleeping deep sleep in the night, if suddenly come somebody comes and owns the tube light, what will happen? The brightness, what will happen to our eyes? Tell me if you are sleep, sleeping deeply in the night, if suddenly someone comes. And on the light, what will happen to our eyes? Our sleep will be disturbed now? Yes, brother. Yeah, we will feel the brightness in our eyes now? Yes. Yes, this is a normal tube light. But this is the light of an angel. Eh? Think about the brightness of Jesus Christ. Brighter than sun at the noon day. Such is the brightness of Jesus. Eh? Next, uh, the angels who visited Sodom and Gomorrah, no? huh? what happened? What happened? What happened to the people of uh, Sodom and Gomorrah when they saw the angels? Yeah, they were blinded. Ah, very good, brother. What happened? They were blinded. You see, they all lost their uh, eyesight. You see, this is the brightness of an angel. Then imagine, huh? If Jesus is going to come huh, with the same brightness, much more brighter than that one, and if he's going to huh, remain on the cloud and that too for a thousand years, how will it be? Let us picturize this one in our mind. Jesus is returning in the clouds. He's going to be in the clouds for a thousand years. Be there only. Huh? Along with that one, he will be having the brightness of a 
you see sun more more bright than a sun then how does he look read revelation 19 chapter revelation 19 chapter revelation 19 chapter uh, verse uh, 11 12 read brother 11 12 13 uh. okay and I saw heaven opened, and behold, a white horse, and he that sat upon him was called Faithful and True, and in righteousness he doth judge and make war. His eyes were as a flame of fire, and yes. in his head were many crowns, and he had a name written that no man knew. See, but himself. our Jesus, huh? he sat upon a white horse, it seems. That means cloud is there. On the clouds, he's sitting on the white horse, and he's coming. Huh? Then, how is his eyes? Flame of fire, it seems bright. You see, shining. Then the sword came out of his mouth, it seems. Then he had a rod in his hand, it seems. And not only that one, he had how many crowns on his head? How many crowns he had? Only one crown, multiple crowns. Imagine, just pictureize these things before your eyes that Jesus is coming. In such a way, and the two being in the same way for how many years? Sir? Not one, two, three years or not. A thousand years, it seems. It is right. eh? If somebody sees the Lord in the same nature for a thousand years, what will happen? What will be their reaction? Read one more verse. Sir. Revelation chapter 20, verse 11. Brother. Revelation chapter 20, verse 11. Hmm. And I saw a great white throne and him that sat on it, from whose face the earth and the heaven fled away, See? and there was found no place for them. What happened? Jesus was sitting on the white throne, it seems. That means he'll be, where, he, where is he sitting? He is not sitting on earth, he is sitting in here. You see, sky only it seems on the white throne. So as soon as anybody comes out of the door in the thousand years, they can see directly Jesus always sitting on the throne. Jesus will be sitting here only. Eyes will be burning, having a rod in their hand. And another end, sword. Next, what is happening? I think. Revelation 14 14, read brother. Revelation 14 14. Uh. And I looked, and behold, a white cloud, and upon the cloud one sat like unto the Son of Man, having on his head a golden hmm. crown, and in his hand a sharp sickle. See, he had a sharp sickle, it seems. So just imagine this picture, dear brethren. He is having a sharp sickle. Huh? And verse 19, brother, huh? what did Jesus do? And the angel thrust in his sickle into the earth and gathered the wine of the earth and cast uh, it into the great wine of the wine wrath of God. He was trampling the wine of the earth, it seems. His cloth was full red, 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 it seems. Huh? Just imagine. The entire mankind, the resurrected mankind, will see this type of Jesus with their eyes for how many years? Not for one year, two years, three years, but for how many years? 1,000 years. 1,000 years. What type of Jesus? Huh? Imagine Jesus, Lord, Jesus upon the white horse, Jesus upon the throne, Jesus uh, having a sword and tramping the wine full of blood, having a sickle. If everybody sees Jesus in the same way that he will be sitting in the sky, not for one day, two day, three day, for a thousand years, practically, dear brethren, this is not at all impossible. This, this is not at all, sorry, this is not at all possible. This is impossible, you can say. Our, to our general understanding itself, we it really, our senses tell us that this is not the way Jesus is going to come. Okay? And moreover, you see, uh, who can see Jesus? Read, brother. Uh, Hebrews 2, 12, 14, read, brother. Go for brother, read. Hebrews 12, 14. Hmm. Hebrews 12, mm. 14. Mm. Follow, uh, follow peace mm. with all men and holiness without which no man shall see the Lord. Eh? 
without holiness no man can see the lord then how can all the dead people as soon as they rise up they can see jesus sir? correct ha huh? eh? until they become holy eh? they can't see the lord it seems sir then how can the poor sin sick uh, sin sick people sinners can see the lord at second coming not at all possible as per the bible and moreover jesus is an unapproachable light no man can see nor can see hmm? but uh, you see there are many incidents in the bible where angels were present uh, but yet uh, they could they could not be seen is there any examples in the bible yes there is example this is the way jesus is going to come jesus is going to come in the spiritual way not visible to mankind nobody can see him but yet uh, he will be ruling in the earth atmosphere is there any example of this in the bible yes there are examples you see like for example uh, the story of balam uh, we know the story of balam no how the donkey spoke to the prophet you all know the story no numbers 21 chapter yes brother yes in in uh, that story a angel actually stood before balam but did balam see the angel was he visible no no, no. But yet but yet that angel guided the donkey the angel spoke invisibly to the prophet he guided him so invisibly there is possible for an angel to be mist of us and guide similarly Elisha, first King, sixth chapter. You can read when you are praying. That was second King, second King, sixth chapter, sixth chapter. Okay, second King, sixth chapter. Okay, the host of Syrians actually come to attack uh, uh, the people of Israel. Then, seeing the host, you see, the people of Israel lose their heart and think that we lost the war. Then immediately, Prophet Elisha tells, "Don't worry." they that are with us and more than they that are with him and immediately you see ah uh, the prophet elijah elisha what did he do he prays to the lord and opens the eyes of uh, you see his servant and immediately what did the servants do you know ah uh, they saw the host of angels standing invisibly guarding the people of israel read second king 6 chapter Second Kings six seventeen brother. Second Kings six seventeen. Can somebody read home brother? Gopal brother. Sure brother. Hmm. Second Kings six chapter verse seventeen. Hmm. And Elisha prayed and said, Lord, I pray thee, open his eyes that he may see. And the Lord opened the eyes of the young man, and he saw. and behold the mountains were was full of horses and chariots of fire round about elisha see when elisha prayed the angels suddenly come from heaven no they were already there they were invisible nobody could see you see elisha saw it you see but when he prayed what happened did everybody see no no no, no. what happened only Only Elisha's servant realized it. God's protection was there. Similarly, you see, when Jesus appeared to Apostle Paul, when he was Saul on the way to Damascus, sir, did everybody see Jesus? Did everybody see Jesus? No. Hmm. Yep. Let us read Acts of the Apostles. Acts of the Apostles. Nine chapter, verse seven. Hmm. Actually, it's not not nine twenty seven. It's nine seven. Hmm. So, brother, can you read? Hmm. Acts nine seven. Hi, this brother. Hmm. Nine seven and the man which joined with him stood speechless, having a voice but seeing no man. What what? They heard the voice but see no man. 
You see? So Jesus was there, shining brightly. Nobody saw the brightness, nothing. They heard the voice. They could not see. This is the way Jesus' is a second advent is going to be. He is going to be invisibly written to the earth atmosphere. And in the same earth atmosphere, he is going to rule for a period of uh, how many years? Uh, thousand years, dear brethren. See, uh, like for example, uh, today Satan is ruling. Correct, now? Can we see him? No. Yeah, we can't see him. But yet we uh, confirm that he is the one who is ruling. This is the way, dear brethren. Therefore, when Bible says that, uh, you see, about the kingdom, it says uh, we can see all the prophets. Abel, Noah, Abraham, Elisha, Jacob, Daniel, David, Job, everything, John the Baptist, everything. But we can't see the church and Jesus in the kingdom. You know, that's what the Bible says. Let us read a few verses. John 13, sorry, Luke 13, 28. Luke 13, 28. And John 17, 22. Luke 13, 28. There hmm. shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth uh, when ye shall see Abraham and Isaac and Jacob and all the prophets in the kingdom of God. And, you, hmm. and you yourself thrust out. See? What does he say? Huh? He says, uh, huh? Huh? What does he say? It is that uh, you shall see Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob in the kingdom of God. Now, who is the king, king in the kingdom of God? Who is the king in the kingdom of God? Jesus Christ. He is not there in the list, no? Why? Because he will be present invisibly. Like, for example, God has given us God and angels. Isn't it? Correct, no? Are the, can we see them? No? Mm -hmm. Yet we can feel it. This is the way it is. Ran. Huh? See, John 17, 24, brother. Huh? John 17, 24. Father, I will. Father, I will that day also, whom thou hast given me, be with me where I am, that they may behold my glory, See? which has given me. They may behold my so glory. Love with me before the foundation of the world. That they may be with me and behold my glory. Only by being with Jesus can we see him, or else we can't see him, dear brethren. Therefore, we need to see and understand the plan of God. Then only you can clearly understand the second coming, the way he is going to return the day of the end. Then what is the meaning of Revelation 1 7? Huh? Where he says that every eye shall see him. Day of the end. We clearly know that the book of Revelation is totally symbolic book. It is not a literal book. Many things in the book of Revelation, 100 out of 100 percent in the book of Revelation is symbolic, day of the end. Majority of them are symbolic. Like, for example, you see, we have studied about a beast uh, in uh, Revelation 13 chapter. We studied about a woman having a crown of 12 uh, stars clothed with the sun standing on the moon. This is not literal. Here you saw the beast having uh, 10 horns, you see, 7 heads. These are all symbolic, dear brethren. This is all not literal. You see, so, the book of Revelation is a, a symbolic book. It is speaking in sign language. Read Revelation 1 1, brother. It is given there itself. Revelation chapter 1, verse 1. Hmm. The revelation of Jesus Christ, which God gave unto him to shew unto his servant things which must shortly come to pass. And he sent and signified it by his angels unto his servant John. You see, he sent and what? Uh, revealed him. No, no, no. He sent and showed him. No. It says, he sent him signified. Signify means what? Sign language. Signify. Okay? He has shown everything in the sign language, in a coded language, in a symbolic way. Everything is the, you see, symbolic way. Therefore, we see, First seal was open. What happened? Second seal was open. What happened? There came a horse. 
the horse color was pale he turned into red white these are all beautiful symbolic language given god willing we are going to see all these things in the future days in the revelation study so this uh, is a symbolic book therefore in revelation 17 it is a total not a literal statement at all just imagine eh? that was what does he say eh? read that verse again brother let us see that was revelation 17 uh, what does he say uh. behold he cometh with clouds and every eye shall see him and they also which pierced him and all kindreds of the earth shall wail because of him oh wait okay so what does he say eh? all kindreds of the world shall wail everybody shall wail now where are everybody where are everybody where are all the people no oh everybody are alive in the earth huh? are everybody alive or dead some are dead some are alive very good some are dead some are alive okay now where are the dead where are they where are the dead people where are they they are still in the prison house of prison house of grave ah Correct, na no? brother. Correct, na no? government brother. They are all in the grave or not? Yes, sir. Yes. Jesus says, "No." John five twenty eight. Marvel not this, at this, all that are in the grave. So everybody are in the grave. Okay. Now, when will they be resurrected? Will they be resurrected after the second coming of Jesus, or as Jesus is going to come? When will the resurrection take place? It is after the second coming or before the second coming. Before the seventh coming. Okay, First Thessalonians four sixteen. Now let us come from it from from the Bible. First Thessalonians four sixteen. Ah. Uh. First Thessalonians four sixteen. Hmm. For the Lord Himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ. Shall rise first. Ah, it is after the second coming of Jesus, the people will be resurrected. So before that one, how can all the people come back to life and see Jesus coming? Correct, ah. Huh? What does Revelation one say? All I shall see him, even those who pierced shall see him. Where who 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 the people who pierced him? The Roman soldiers, the Jewish people, they are all dead. if they have to see jesus they have to come back to life and when will that happen that will only happen after second coming no so before second coming how can they uh, be alive and see jesus coming therefore this scripture is a symbolic language okay so it says every eye shall see him what is the meaning of see in the bible see what happened to adam and eve when after they ate the uh, uh, forbidden fruit what happened to them Read Genesis three seven, brother. Let us see what happened to them. Hmm. Genesis three seven, brother. One brother, is it possible for you to read Genesis three seven? Okay, go for brother. Read Genesis three seven. Hmm. And the eyes of them both were opened, and they knew that they were naked, and they. Yeah. What happened? Whose eyes were opened, brother? Adam and Eve's. Or is it God had created them blind? Ah, did God create Adam and Eve as blind? No. Or is it then it says no, their eyes were open. Then that means all this day they should be blind, brother. Hmm. Correct? Ah, hmm. were they blind? Ah, no. No. Then what is the meaning of see? The eyes were open. Means what? The meaning of that one? The eyes of understanding were open. They had their eyes. They could not realize many things. After the eight the forbidden fruit, then only they began to realize. Similarly, this is the meaning of see in the Bible. Therefore, the word you see used for see in Hebrew in the Greek 
it is optimi 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 means you know what to be what's the meaning of the term you see eyes of understanding therefore jesus said no he that has eyes let them let them understand let them see very good let them understand jesus is not speaking about a little eyes he open little blind people's eyes but what about the eyes of understanding he was actually speaking the eyes of understanding your friend you see eyes of understanding read matthew 13 13 brother huh? matthew 13 13 Hmm. Uh, Matthew thirteen thirteen. Hmm. Therefore, speak I to them in parables, because they seeing see not, and hearing they hear not. Yeah, Neither, not. Uh, uh, see, seeing understand. see not. Seeing see not means what? Uh, seeing they can't understand. Hearing they can't grasp it. Now, verse sixteen, brother. Huh? Verse sixteen, but. Blessed are your eyes, for they see, and your ears, for they hear. Yeah, see, blessed are your eyes and ears, dear brethren. Therefore, this is speaking about the eyes and ears of understanding. You see, Satan is called as the god of this earth, correct? Now, he has blinded the eyes of. He has blinded the eyes of whom? Men. Very good. Second Corinthians four four, brother. Huh? Read Second Corinthians four four. Second Corinthians four four. Hmm. In whom the God of this world had blinded the minds of them. Oh, oh, oh. wait, wait, wait! He has blinded the eyes of huh? many Muslims of everybody. Then everybody are blind ah today in this world ah. The only blind people living in this world ah. No. Ah, uh, then what is the meaning of eyes here? Ah, uh? yes, blind the eyes of many means what? Ah, uh? eyes means understanding. Ah, uh? this is the meaning. Uh, Jesus said, "Every eye shall see him." You see, dear brethren, when he says, "Every eye shall see him," it is speaking about the eyes of understanding. Ah, uh? Ephesians one eighteen. Read with her. Ephesians one eighteen. Hmm. Uh, read that. Somebody can read. Hmm. Ephesians one eighteen. Hmm. Go for the read. Uh. Read, Om Brother. The eyes of your understanding being enlightened. See? Eyes of your understanding being enlightened. It means what? You had eyes, but it's now been enlightened. You are able to see and grasp the truth. This is the meaning of eyes in the Bible. Read Ephesians two two, Brother. Ephesians two two. Hmm. When in time past they walk according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air. Yeah, prince of the power of air. Ah, huh. a spirit that now working in the children of. Disobedience. Disobedience. The spirit that now works in the children of disobedience. Who is this prince of the power of the air? That means in the air, the devil is there. The fallen angels are there. Can we see them? Can we see them? Is it possible for us to see them? No. 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 Oh, they are invisible, but yet uh, they are the one who ruling. That's what the Bible says. The prince of the power of the air means that he is the prince. Jesus said, "The prince of this world cometh; he has nothing over me." Remember the subject of the three world, heaven and the earth. That was stated in the first world, the heaven and earth that are now, the heaven and earth that is going to come in the huh? third world. The first heaven and the first earth was the fallen angels and the earth giants that was destroyed. Second uh, heaven and earth. Satan and the fallen angels are ruling invisibly from air, earth, atmosphere. Earth, who is there? All the evil, corrupt ministers. Jesus at his second advent is going to destroy this uh, heaven, the spiritual rulership, and uh, earth. You see, ministers, and who will rule? 
in the heavenly part as satan is ruling invisibly when no man can see the same way jesus at his second advent is going to rule on this earth atmosphere for a period of how many years a thousand years invisibly but yet people can understand it how we are not able to see the devil but yet we are able to understand that it is his work similarly in the christ kingdom though nobody can see jesus they will clearly be able to grasp that this is the work of the lord jesus christ at his second advent huh? read ephesians 612 but ephesians 612 for we wrestle not against the flesh and blood but against principalities against powers see therefore he says we don't wrestle against flesh and blood but against powers and principalities spiritual wickedness in high places what heavenly places only this, this is our warfare dear brethren so how jesus is going to rule and is going to come means he is going to come in a invisible way because he is in a mighty divine nature spirit being who no man can see nor can see he can never come in the same brightness what everybody sees are blind so he is going to you see come in a spiritual body and uh, rule from this earth atmosphere therefore if we need to identify this uh, jesus christ who is going to return to second advent and rule invisibly we need to identify jesus not with this eyes we can't see jesus with this little eyes but we need to see jesus and understand with the eyes of understanding uh, you know eyes of understanding mean what to understand jesus rule you see yeah uh, we to understand the second presence of jesus we need signs how to identify therefore you know when jesus uh, told that he is going to come second advent uh, the disciples questioned him uh, the same question what did they question him read matthew 24 3 brother matthew 24 3 uh. and as he sat up on the mount of olives and disciples came unto him uh, privately saying tell us uh, when small uh, uh, when shall these things be and what shall be the sign of thy coming and of the end of the world okay what did they ask what is the sign of thy coming and the end of the world so give us a sign when you are going to come and when the world is going to end isn't it they asked for a sign now how many signs did jesus give if somebody asks me brother when you are going to come to nepal you would please tell me how you are going to come to nepal so that i can identify you if you ask me the question what should my answer be it should be very simple brother i will be coming in white shirt blue pant with a you see black suitcase in my hand i'll be waiting for you at the airport this is what my reply will be you no know? correct no this is the way you going to identify me correct i'll be there at such and such time i'll come by such and such plane that would be my reply correct no but here what was the reply of jesus he did not give them only one answer as given in revelation 17 why are you asking me this one don't you know i'll come in the heaven i'll come in the clouds okay you know, i'll come directly with the clouds sitting upon a horse white horse i'll come with the angels they shall all blow the trumpet i will descend slowly by clouds we keep on watching the sky did jesus say that one in matthew 24 no you go and read freely in your house jesus never said what done but instead he gave the signs why the signs were given jesus could have told now why are you worrying i am going to come visibly pa everybody can see me don't worry at all when i am going to come i will be brighter than the sun everybody can see me i'll come light that only directly i'll land before you he could have told now he should have given the signs why did he give the signs that means his presence will be a invisible presence therefore jesus clearly warned if somebody tells that i am going to come literally visibly don't believe it at all read brother math 24 26 brother math 24 26 read brother wherefore if they shall say unto you behold he is in the desert go see? not forth 
see jesus want i am telling you before itself don't believe if anybody tells that i am going to land in the desert don't go i am not going to land visibly in the desert don't go some people came you know will come land in the mount only you will come and land in somali desert will come in the jerusalem temple suddenly huh? where does the bible say he says don't trust those words then continue huh? go not forth behold he is in the sacred chambers believe it not if somebody tells a secretly jesus has come where inside my room inside the chamber is there he came and spoke to me he's come already where he is sitting there in the temple of jerusalem don't believe it why jesus second presence is not going to be like this one dear brethren he is not going to come visibly at all hence in matthew 24 chapter he gives a series of signs you see when you are free kindly read matthew 24 chapter see almost 51 verses are there lot of signs he gives about wars pestilences you see huh? and uh, famine everything uh, disobedience sin great time of trouble everything he gives uh, dear brethren so these are the signs given to see you see the returned invisible lord how the return lord will be there you see how to identify him these are the signs that are given to identify dear brethren therefore you see dear brethren so in the next week we are going to see what are the signs that are given to identify our lord jesus at his second advent